the whole Passover meal was the reminder of God's delivering Israel from Egyptian captivity and God protecting Israel as he was bringing out judgment. I mean, when the lamb was sacrificed, the blood of that lamb was put on the doorpost so that when the angel of death came over, he wouldn't go in and take the firstborn from those homes, but took the firstborns from the Egyptian homes. Covenant was made and remembered at each Passover meal, covenant of God's protection and deliverance. And that a covenant, when ratified, was ratified by blood. Exodus 24 and verse 8 says this, Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. What was the covenant? It was the promise that if you obey God, if you kept his commandments, you would live and he would prosper you. But if you disobeyed, he would bring curses and you would die. That was the covenant. That was the promise that if you kept the law and obeyed, you would be perfect and blessed. But if you disobeyed, you would be under God's judgment. Quickly, let me just point out Deuteronomy chapter 30. This is, this is Moses' own explanation of the covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 30. As Moses walks through, he reminded them, the Israelites, of these promises. He says, so it shall be when all of these things have come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you. And you call them to mine in all nations where, you, where the Lord your God has banished you. And you return to the Lord your God and you obey him with all your heart and soul according to all that I commanded you today, you and your sons. Then the Lord your God will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you and will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If you're, if you're out Casts are at the ends of the earth. From there, the Lord your God will gather you, and from there, He will bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. And He goes on and He describes this interaction here with Israel. If, you, if you're scattered, you're going to be re- restored by obeying him and obeying his commandments. And if you obey him and obey his commandments, he will bring you back together and he will restore you. And he goes back through all of this in verse 9 or verse 8. And you shall obey the Lord and observe all his commandments which I command you today. Then the Lord your God will prosper you abundantly in all the work of your hand, in the offspring of your body, in the offspring of your cattle, in the produce of your ground. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good, just as he rejoiced over your fathers. Verse 10, if you obey the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of the law, if you turn to the Lord your God with your heart and your soul. Through the whole chapter here, of chapter 30 of Deuteronomy, Moses basically lays out this. If you obey God, he will richly prosper you. Your life will be filled with prosperity. If you disobey, he will cut you off. You will die. That is the old covenant. Turn back to Matthew 26. The new covenant is this. There is forgiveness in God. You believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and there's forgiveness in God. That's what he lays out there in verse 28. For this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. There is forgiveness. So with God in obedience, there is prosperity in life. In faith in God, there is forgiveness. 
restoration. Certainly what Israel would see and what we would see when we see the law of God and the commands of God, we would see how we have fallen short and how we've disobeyed and how we've been carried away into evil and how our hearts have been hardened and we see our own corruption and how far we are separated from God. But it is in Christ and through Christ that we see our access to God, that our sins can be forgiven. And every time we come together then and take of the Lord's table, we come together reminding ourselves of one, our vital union to Christ, that we are dependent upon him for everything, that it is his life credited to ours that gives us the ability to stand before God. And the second thing that we see is that great debt we had is covered My great debt is covered in Christ because he shed his blood on our behalf for the forgiveness of sins, fulfilling exactly what the sacrificial system demanded. Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood by reason of life that makes atonement. Jesus laid down his life to pay the ransom of sin.